Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing a mailbag time. So I received a bunch of new things, especially batteries, also cameras for latency testing and two micro brushless quadcopters. Actually three, one of them you guys haven't seen. I haven't really flown it much, which is the Leader HD and the review should be up very soon. So let's start with the batteries. I actually picked up a couple of batteries here. Now lately I'm finding the China Hobby Line are really great. So I went ahead and picked up some more, the 1800 milliamp here. Uh, the 1500 milliamp is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I mean, there's still new packs, but I've gotten around maybe 40 cycles in them. They're still going really strong and they are taking some good abuse. So that's really nice. So I picked up uh, the 1800, just want a little bit extra flight time for cruising as well as rescue missions. And I'll explain that later on. But these are really great batteries, especially the 1500 milliamp. I'll have some link down below. You can go ahead and check those out. So what else did I pick up? So since they were so good, why not get some micro ones? So as you've seen recently, you know, there's a lot of new micro brushes that are out that are really good, actually. So this is the Mobula 7 HD. I never flew the regular one. And also have here the Scorpion, which we're going to see right now. So I've decided to pick up some batteries. I don't know how well they're going to test. So this is a 3S 350 milliamp from China. Hobby line. I think I think these were on a combo for a really good price. So we'll see how well they come. XT30 here. So we'll see how well these are going to uh, perform. Here's also URUAV. Now URUAV, I personally don't recommend uh, their 1500 milliamp batteries. I think one of them just died out of nowhere on me, but you know, they're, they're really low quality batteries. So I also picked these up. These are 2S high volt, 260 milliamp micro batteries here with XT30. I wanna test these. Maybe their little micro line is probably better, but I'll keep you guys updated. They're really good priced, but I know for a fact their 1S HVs are really good, but these, I don't know just yet. Possibly they're gonna be good if, if obviously it's just two of those put together. So also picked up more UR UAV 1800 milliamp. I would really wanna test these. I know they're not that powerful, but I wanna see how well they last. Hopefully better than the 1500 milliamp because I think I only got two of those and one is dead if I remember correctly, but I'll have an update video on that very soon. So these are the GNB 300 milliamp HV 3S uh, lipos here. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. These are high volt lipos. So I'm very curious to see how well they're gonna perform. I have no idea. That's why I picked up a bunch of them, see which one I like. Never pick up more than two of a new battery until you've tested it and made sure it's good. One time I made that mistake and I bought like, it was like the first six months of my YouTube saving. I just saved all the money I made from YouTube. And I, wait, I it was like 500 bucks and I just used it all on Turnigy Graphene's, which I just basically ended up throwing away after three cycles. They were just trash. So yeah, just be careful when buying batteries. So here we also have uh, new ESCs. I do have other ESCs also that you don't see here currently, but uh, the ESC testing, I'm still, as you know, many of you probably don't know, I just moved into a new shop and I'm still preparing it and uh, the ESC testing will be up very soon. I'm just waiting to finish that environment. We'll just basically finish with the move in order to start because I have a bunch of ESCs lined up for testing. Uh, these are the little, nice little budget line ESCs. They look pretty good. That's why I decided to pick up some. Hopefully they're gonna perform good as well. Only time will tell. So I'll have these linked down below and go ahead and check those out. Also, I found this 200 amp meter, uh, which is gonna be really cool because I have a couple of projects in my mind and plus these things are always useful, especially for the types of things that I do. So I picked one of these up. It's really nice, it's very basic. You know, you just have your input and your output. And here you have something for source. I don't know what the hell this is. It's really trippy though. It has three pins here. I don't know if you can update it or do something with it or even take the reading just yet. Their instruction manual wasn't really clear, but I'll probably connect it to the oscilloscope and see what I get from there. So it would be really nice if out of that, you know, those three pins right there, we can actually get, for example, the reading uh, through some kind of a serial port, which would be really, really great uh, because then we can use this in much more advanced uh, builds for something like a, for something like brushless micro motors. I think I should get into that, like the super brushless micro motors testing. That would be really interesting. Uh, also, I got these Runcam DVRs. Actually, I didn't get them separate. They came with these two cameras. Uh, this does not add latency and it's pretty good DVR. So if you ever wanted one, uh, they're pretty good. So these, these are combos currently that come with these. So I got the Runcam Swift Mini 2 for noise testing. And I also got the Runcam Robin here. So, so yeah, these two are gonna be tested for latency and as well as flight footage in a later date. I'll probably stick it on the airplane or something. Also, I got a bunch of new Fat Shark modules. So I got the Rapid Fire. 
Um, I got another Furious FPV. I don't know if this is a new one because I think I have three of these now. One that came with the docking and yeah, I'll have to double check. I don't know if the hardware is different, but this is my main one. And I've gotten the Achilles uh, Furious FPV, which personally I do not recommend. Um, it's really buggy and it's very flickery and it's really annoying. But yeah, for, for me, I'm still using the normal Furious FPV one. Uh, so it's just really, it's just been really good. Uh, that's all actually I stick on there. I have the Owl RC. Well, I'm going to have like somewhat of a shootout later on once I figure out how to do that in a nice way. But um, yeah, currently I, I do not recommend the Achilles uh, one with the OSD. It's really terrible. So the rapid fire is going to be tested very soon. I see everybody using it. So it must be good. And that's why I picked some up. Also the Mobula 7 HD, as you can tell here, they do come with these, you know, the 3S, this is a 3S? Yeah, it's 3S high volt. So this comes with the 3S high volt 300 milliamp, which is perfect. That's what we got here. And most of them, well, I don't know why the hell they're choosing this really shitty type of, you know, connector. Cause if you get any aftermarket uh, batteries, so for example, okay. So the GNBs will fit. These are 2S, so theoretically they shouldn't fit. Okay. And this one, there's no way in hell this one would fit. And this is not a HV, I think. No, this isn't nature. This is normal. So that wouldn't fit either. I don't know why they're sticking to this really ugly design. Because there's another solution for this, which I'll show you right now. I just actually saw it when I received this thing. So let me just find the correct battery here. So this is the new Scorpion. And it doesn't have anything special going on for it. I even forgot its price. But what I really like is down here, they also have that same mounting solution as the mobile and everything. But they even also provide you with this thing, which will allow you to remove this with the four screws right there and install this instead with a battery strap. This is a really terrible one, but I mean, you should bring your own battery strap. What the hell is this here? I think that's like a sticker for anti-slip. You would put it right in the middle there. I mean, that's nice. It's really cheap, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so they even give you an anti-slip sticker that's super tiny. And it just, it, theoretically, it should go here. That's what I'm thinking it is. But obviously, it is right here. So it comes with a 2S, I believe, high volt. Um, no, just a normal 2S here. 300 milliamp 2S. So we're going to try the high volts on these. And I'm really thinking of starting to test these motors out. Now, this one's running 1103, 1100KV motors here with these uh, special props. Okay, I was just going to say, yeah, just be careful in flying it because it doesn't have the screws. But it doesn't use the screws with these propellers. So... Yeah, that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm actually going to start charging the batteries now and testing after the latency testing. All right, so let's put this to the side. What else did we get? I got a new frame because I need a new uh, 6S ESC testing quad. I already have a 4-in-1 6S ESC testing quad, but I wanted, you know, standalone uh, ESC testing. So this is uh, the series frame. I'll have a link down below. It comes with these 3D printed parts. And they're actually really great quality. It's actually really nice. I mean, look at this. I don't remember how much this frame cost. I think it's a seven inch too. The Look at the print quality. It's really good. I wish I could print this good. That is just awesome. If anyone knows these TPU, where to get it from, because everything I get is way more flexible than this. Even I got like 95A flex filament and it just doesn't feel this rigid here. Really nice printing quality. Hopefully the frame is going to be as good as the printing quality. Uh, in terms of vibrations, arms seem to be, I think, 5 millimeters or 4 millimeters here. Uh, the cuts look... Let's actually open this thing. Okay, we're just going to take one random piece. And carbon fiber looks weird. It doesn't look like it's the best, to be honest. No, ooh, this is really nasty. So I guess you get what you pay for. So let's take a look here. So here we could see these. These I think these were tabs, possibly, or vibrations in the machine. And if you take a closer look here, this is really nasty. Yeah, I think this was a really big tab. What they do is they would like, you can kind of see what's really going on here. So you see this really ugly line here. What, what happens is while it's doing the uh, CNCing, It'll lift up here and leave about one millimeter. And then so the part doesn't fall down or it gets loose and then it just screws everything up. But I think what happened here as it went down lower and lower, this piece started to play a little and that's why we see these lines in here. And I'll show you that in the CNC videos that are gonna be upcoming. Now, as I can tell right here, this cutting quality right there, uh, you know, it's, um, what is it, what can I say? 
uh, probably they didn't change their end mill or they just had a really bad end mill or this one was on one of the last batches before they change out the end mill because you know in the end mills usually you know time based you could have it working for 45 minutes and then you have to replace it an hour two hours whatever uh, so these things work like that it doesn't the, the carbon isn't of the best quality so uh, hopefully it's a really cheap one I forgot how much this thing costs but the, but at least the 3d stuff the 3d printed stuff is nice but what's the point if it breaks on you all right guys so I'm gonna have everything linked down below and um, expect the cam these two cameras latency tested and the leader h7 with the uh, Go fly Scorpion 80 and the Mobula 7 HD um, review out very soon. Also, these little micro these micro batteries are st still going to be too early until I put at least if I put if I was able to put 50 cycles in a couple of them, then I'll come back as soon as possible. Um, and these will know what's up with these and also these here. These are always a little bit uh, dodgy, if I might say. So just be careful when buying these, in my opinion. I didn't have good luck first time. And, well, that's it, guys. I'll have everything linked down below. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.